So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you are. Where y'all been at, man? <laughs> you know, I'm just playing. I know I've been gone for a minute, but uh, I guess we'll get to that later. The very first thing I had to say is I missed y'all. But outside of that, look, I got to get to your boy. Um, he looked like Dave Chappelle. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to call him Bokeem Woodbine because uh, on the internet space, that's evil Dave Chappelle and he impersonating my favorite comedian or what used to be. Right. I got to see him at the Fillmore here in Detroit after it was the second night, the first night he bombed. Right. That was a big deal. And he even told a story about that where he was saying he looked took two hits off of some weed and didn't go well. He knew he was going to buy him. So that turned into a thing, but that second night was pretty good. Um, I say pretty good. And that's, I, I don't know. I enjoyed myself. I couldn't, I couldn't complain about the money that I spent on the ticket. Cause you know, it was a pretty good night, but in comparison to a lot of the specials that he's dropped, in comparison to the, a lot of the specials that he dropped since then, it's like, this can't be the same dude. This can't be the same dude that I grew up watching. Like, I think for what it's worth, for me, that's like the standard of Dave Chappelle. I don't think he's done better than that special that he did in San Francisco. That was like... Like he was just clicking. He had it all together. After that, it was Africa, and you know we know the story. After that, he came back with his his leg rolled up, and um, <laughs> won't even need to touch into that. But you know he he's been a different person since then. So he got the next Netflix specials, and uh, apparently you know things started to turn around for him since then. But the one thing I notice is. This is a different person, you know, body structure, even his head shape, like a lot is different about him, which you can take in whatever direction you want to take him, but that's not the same person. And we can speak about that philosophically or physically or whatever. It's, it's not even the same kind of comedy. So I got to watch him and his critique of Cat Williams and he was just speaking on, like, the first thing I noticed was, like, he was kind of complimenting him in the beginning. It was like, you know, he messed with Cat and all of that stuff. He didn't really have nothing bad to say about him as a person, but he was questioning how Cat was going at other entertainers. All right, they both in agreement about they against this... Uh, they against the powers that be. So he said the Illuminati, he against that. But what what part of the game is taking out Cedric the Entertainer? And Cat is one of the best painters in the game. Why is he painting such a bad picture of black people? And I think that's weak. That's what I hear from certain black people and I see it on the internet. That's some of the weakest stuff you can come up with. Seriously. I, I really got bothered when I was listening to him talking because it was like, are you serious? Like cat, the whole premise of cat getting on club Shay Shay was responding to some of the things that were said on that very platform. He's responding to that. So these people brought him out of, you know, whatever cave he was sitting in where he didn't have nothing to say. And he got to respond to it. He got to set the record straight. That's how they started out the video. He's setting the record straight. So he didn't come out just firing at people. He had a couple of people caught strays, but like it wasn't just out of nowhere. So like, man, Dave was saying that he only talking about black people, but he talked about how even this wasn't the first time he mentioned Harvey Weinstein. Like, Dave, what are you talking about? Bo King. That's what I, I'm already getting off off task. It's Bo King. Bo King, man. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I guess because you didn't get the interviews that you wanted to get, P 
people aren't really interested in having to sit down and talking to you for, you know, whatever amount of time that you thought you was just going to get on stage and impersonate Dave Chappelle, wherever you kidnapped him and hear him from everybody else, I need you to bring him back. Seriously, I need the real Dave Chappelle back because this Dave Chappelle we've been getting for the last maybe decade. If I think about it, it's been like a decade of who is this dude and what did y'all do with the real Dave? He's just standing on stage, ranting, yapping, talking, and not making me laugh. I can't appreciate that at all. Like, Dave Chappelle was brilliant. Dave Chappelle was insightful. Dave Chappelle brought a point of view that you didn't even see coming. Like, that was the thing I loved about him. He had punchlines that you weren't even ready for because you didn't see it coming. You didn't know how he was building up the joke. You didn't know where it was coming from. And I guess I'll shoot him some bell and say that maybe because I've been listening to him for so long, I could see it coming. But like the whole highlight of his last special was like controversial, which has really been his thing. He's been like on some Howard Stern stuff. Like it's just controversy. He just like he's taking a jab at people and like the trans jokes, like we over that. man. It's not just me. I see as other people were like, man, you just going to be the dead horse. Like, this is what you're doing now. This is what you're reducing your comedy to. That's why I say, like, the real Dave was brilliant. This stuff is not. I saw that joke coming a mile away. I watched him paint it. I knew what he was painting before he was done with the picture, which I've never been able to say about Dave Chappelle up until now. So, Bokeem, you got to cut it out. I see you. I see what you're doing. I don't appreciate it at all. He's saying what part of the game they both against the Illuminati or the powers that be. What part of the game is taking out Cedric the Entertainer? Well, Cedric, according to Cat, Cedric lied. And we saw the side by side. We saw the jokes. It's clear that he took that joke from Cat. And originally he messed up the timeline, but they, they got it straight where he cleared it up. That's a Cat Williams kind of joke. I've been watching Cat Williams forever. So even when I saw the joke, I thought about it like this is the kind of joke that Cat Williams does. You can't name another Cedric joke that's even akin to that. Where did he get it from? This thing about uh, taking food off of other people's plates or taking money out of other people's pockets. Like, man, when did we come so averse to the truth. He just speaking the truth. And if you got people coming for him, like he don't have the right to defend himself. The thing that got me was like, if I told my story, it would break your heart. Man, if I told my story, it'd break your heart. If I told my neighbor's story, it'd break your heart. That's all of us. Everybody can play victim. All this man doing is defending his own name. So cut it out, man. I don't respect it. And if you riding with that, then I don't respect you because I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't ride with it. You talking about grown men and somebody don't get to defend his honor because you're talking about he only went after black people. What are you talking about? And then the longer I listened to him, like he did make mention of the interview dropped the same day as his special. And that's when I went, Oh, okay. As far as I'm concerned, you just told me exactly what the problem was because your whole thing is like shock jock. Now you making these inflammatory comments. So that was a big part of, if it wasn't for cat Williams interview, we would have probably been talking more about Dave Chappelle special and how he was talking about trans jokes again. Because here we go again with the trans jokes. Like you just beating a dead horse to death. (laughs) Like, I don't don't understand how you could think that's even interesting to people at this point. Now, like, again, that's what you're doing. And you want us to divert our attention from something else to talk about that. No. I'm not messing with it.
you can't blame Cap for dropping that interview because he wasn't in control of that. That was Shannon and his people. That's his production team. They decided when to drop that interview. I don't know exactly when he recorded it, but I know it dropped on that day. And you know that, too, because you made a mention of it. So that's where I was like, no, nah, this can't be the same Dave because we're not used to seeing him and all people are human. So, again, I'm going to shoot him some bell on that and just say that we are human. So we susceptible to a whole lot of stuff that maybe you wouldn't expect. But I just heard jealousy. This dropped the same day as you. If it wasn't for that, we'd be talking more about your special. Maybe. Because. From everything I've been hearing, it wasn't all that special. Which is what I've been accustomed to over the last few specials that you drop. It ain't really much to talk about other than the trans jokes. Like, I don't have the bleeding hurt for your story and whatever else it is you're talking about. And D-Ray was trying to explain it in his own way. So I guess we got to appreciate the fact that he tried, but it was like, maybe this was supposed to be some intimate conversation between you and the crowd, but y'all didn't take the phones clearly. So then it got out, which I think he wanted it to get out. I think that was like his, his way of getting the message out to cat that he just wasn't pleased. And I really think that was all jealousy. I even dropped a thread about it after I watched it. The statements that he was making, it was just like, okay, you really showed your hand. Like you exposed yourself for just being jealous. Not the only one because Steven Jackson, man, all, all kind of people had stuff to say since this interview dropped. And it's just, you can call the lightning in the bottle. Um, as far as YouTube interviews go, that's been like one, of, I think it's number two at this point. It's the number two. It's the second most viewed interview in YouTube history. That's saying a lot, but what D Ray is saying also holds merit because now people are interested in what Cedric had to say and Steve and Ricky Smiley and everybody else because of all the different names he brought up. He did breathe life into comedy where comedy was dull. People don't laugh at this stuff no more because they got all kind of entertainment that they checking out. And if Cat was such a hater, he wouldn't have been shouting out the new school. He didn't have nothing to say about them. He was shouting out people just hilarious and DC Young Fly and all kind of people. Cat is not this hater you're trying to paint him out to be. He was addressing the people that he had a problem with. And Unless you want them to have a problem with you, then what are you talking about? That's what I can't. Bokeem, like, you got to cut it out, man. That's the thing that I really can't understand about all of this is like, what's what's Bokeem Woodbine's gripe with Cat Williams? Other than being jealous that this interview dropped the same day as your special. Stop impersonating Dave. Dave is way funnier than this stuff that you're doing. Like, I, I can't appreciate that, man. And it's like, he even made mention of, he agreed with a lot of the stuff the cat says, what makes this, like, even more, like, mind-boggling to me. It's like, okay, if you agree with what he's saying, and you saying that he never had anything to say about you because you never been nothing but kind to him, then... You should understand why he's saying the things that he's saying about these other people. The story is right in itself. So you think we can't see through this? You think we can't read the writing on the wall and see what's really happening here? You're jealous. Just say it. I think everybody at the very least can respect you more because it's people that can see through all of the BS you just jealous, man. Let your feelings go. That's really all that this is. It's jealousy. And I never thought I would see this from Dave Chappelle, but it's not Dave Chappelle. It's Bokeem Woodbine, man. We got an impersonator on the loose. And he filling in for all of Dave Chappelle's appearances. And he just 
on the prowl. Like he just going wild with it. He's standing up and doing, you know, hour, two hours, just talking to people. That's not what we show up to see Chappelle for, man. He was much more brilliant than that, man. You you got to stop that. I'm not falling for it. You can't fool me, man. But it's just weird thing where like, all right, you said you agree with everything. You, for the most part, you agree with Cat. You didn't have a disagreement, which is another like nobody's calling Cat a liar. So what's the problem? Nobody is calling Cat a liar. Nobody's suing them for defamation. None of that. Y'all getting after what's the girl's name? Uh, Tasha K. Like they, how many people that had lawsuits against her? Like you got to be careful about what you're saying out here because people will sue you. Nobody suing Cat. So that says a lot. He never did anything to you. So then you just going to come at him like that. Like he made sure to speak highly of you in more than one interview. That's the other thing is like a lot of the stuff that I was hearing Cat speak about. Like it wasn't even news to me. So I'm a little surprised at just how big that interview got because. I heard a lot of that before and even like like earthquake collateral damage. But I heard Corey Holcomb talking about how earthquake was illiterate earthquake like Kurt Corey been at earthquake for a while. But that's because of some stuff that happened at one of his shows. And if you're not a uh, faithful like 5150 uh, viewer, then you wouldn't know about that. But Corey spoke on earthquake a long time, a long time ago. So, again, like a lot of this stuff is not even news to me. It's just like it was just like whatever to me. I just thought the the format, the actual interview, two and a half hours, I was entertained where I sat there and watched the whole thing all the way through. And I laughed a whole lot. It was funny to me because Kat is just funny. And then even when D-Ray went to talk about that, like Dave couldn't hate on that part or Bo Keem. Bo Keem couldn't hate on that part. Because he even said it was funny. I understand, man. We got this weird thing now where we acting like, are oh, you hating on a black man? You hate you can't talk down on a black man. We talking about black people in public. White people beef in public, too. What is this thing that we're doing? Y'all not tuned into it. To, so y'all don't know. White people be beefing in public, too. But to act like we tearing each other down because this person is this person clearly came on at the beginning of the interview and stated that if it wasn't for people coming on this very platform and saying what they had to say, he wouldn't have nothing to say at all. That was the reason for him jumping out like the, the way he did. So, like, get over yourself. And why we have such a problem with the truth or whatever person's version of the truth. It's this weird thing we doing now. Like, why can't we all just get along? Because we don't. You get along with everybody at your job. You get along with everybody in your family. Really, that's the game we're going to play. That's what's bothering me. It's like whenever we're in a situation where we holding people accountable, then people act like it's hate. No, man, we just holding your feet to the fire. Stand on it. Because you were sitting there bold enough to say whatever you had to say about me. And now that I have something to say back, I'm a hater. That don't make sense. And if y'all understand the age of Aquarius, it's not going to fly. That's what Kat was really speaking to. Like, it's the age of Aquarius. Like, the truth will be revealed. And it's being revealed whether you like it or not. Y'all got to cut it out, man. Y'all got to grow up. Like, y'all, y'all too childish for what's happening in real life. We can't get along. We all can't get along because 
we never got along from the beginning of time. It's just what it is in human history. So stop it. Stop acting like it's this utopia that we living on on Earth and people just messing it up because that's not the way it is. That's why people have an idea of heaven being that utopia because it's hell here. It's haters here. It's people. It's murderers here. It's rapists here. It's people that want your spot. It's all kind of problems. Sometimes you don't even know what you did to warrant to some of the stuff that's coming in your direction, but it is what it is because everybody ain't right. So if you see somebody trying to correct that or at least as far as they concern, what's the problem with that? Why do you have an issue with that? Check yourself. Other issue I have with black people in this space is like, all right, I'll go here because it's leaning into, it's not just specifically black people, but it's the black Christians. Like I went to see the book of Clarence and uh, as a faithful movie goer, I enjoyed myself. I had a good time. Like I enjoyed that movie. It made me laugh. It made me think. Um, it kept me engaged for the most part through most of the movie. I didn't look at it like some historical piece. I looked at it as somebody taking their idea of a uh, historical time and, you know, putting a twist on it because it's not an actual character. It's not an actual figure. If you check the Bible, Thomas had a twin. So then James, what is his name? James. I can't remember his last name, but uh, same guy that did the harder day for a, like he took that character and made something out of it. And it's a compelling piece. If you ask me, I appreciate writing. I appreciate creativity. So like I was more than engaged for most of the movie. Um, you know, any issues I had, it, it wasn't a big deal. Like, if you take your Lord and Savior seriously, I can understand. But the problem that I had was like YouTube, Christian YouTube, all of the reviewers, all of the critics, they gave more publicity to this movie than even the production studio did. And it was all negative. It was all about blasphemy. And for the most part, from what I saw was people that didn't even watch the movie. How do you have a critique on a movie you didn't even see? How is that possible? You took one or two at the most trailers that you watched and you decided this was a blasphemous film. And, you know, this is a problem and this and that. And I'm just like, man, this is so ridiculous. Like, how do y'all get away with this? And how do y'all get people to actually sit down and give credence to the review that you're doing? When you didn't watch the film, you don't know. You don't know. I try to do this without giving spoilers. It's a character arc It's a person that starts at a certain point And by the end of the movie, it's something different. But you can't get there when you sit there and watch a trailer and decide. I can watch a trailer and say, I'm not interested in that movie, but what I can't do is give a review on it. What I can't do is recommend or not recommend a movie to a, look. Y'all don't need to see this because this is blasphemous. How do you know? What's, what's the evidence you have to support that when you didn't sit down and take the time to conceptualize what you actually watch and you didn't watch it. That makes sense to me. I don't understand that. That's why I have a problem with like, man, this now I'm getting to see, like I said before, like people had this visceral reaction when it comes to Christians. This is why Christians, this is why don't nobody like y'all. If we can all say, there is no perfect people in the world, then stop standing on your platform, your mountaintop, your high horse 
and acting like people so beneath you. But you can't do that. Man. It's like a disease. Like there's so many people, once they convert to Christianity, then they forget that they humans. And they start looking at everybody else like they're not even worth the time. Like this is why people don't like you. Because you could take a film that you didn't even see and turn it into a 20, 30, 40 minute video of your summary of something you didn't even. You got a, a minute and a half at the most out of a, a trailer and turn that into a whole video. And people are supposed to take that seriously. I can't take you seriously. You a whole joke because you don't know. Again, I'm trying not to spoil the movie for anybody that's still interested in watching it. And it's not an endorsement. Like, I'm not being paid to talk about how good or bad the movie was. It's just something that really irked me. Like, I was sitting there, and I I mean, several reviews. I'm just like, okay, let's, let's just see what this person is talking about. And it was review after review after review of people that didn't even see the movie. Can't tell you about it. And I mean, from the Christian standpoint, and this is blasphemous. This is blasphemous. This is blasphemous. How do you know? How do you know? Because of Jay-Z's involvement? Because of what you got from a couple of clips from an interview? I don't support Jay-Z. If you know me personally, you know exactly how I feel about him. I don't even bring him up when it comes to this movie because he's not the creator He's involved to a point, but he didn't write this movie. He didn't direct it. He didn't cast the film like this is not his movie. So it's it's weird. I think a lot of y'all should be ashamed for leading people off the path because your creator is the ultimate judge. If you believe in him the way you're supposed to. And I think if you know the book the way you're supposed to, then you can speak to Saul and Paul, which is the same person. And the way his character art grows, if you know the story of his life, then this movie should be even more relatable to that. You should understand it on a different type of level, but you can't even open your mind up because you're so rigid and you so closed off and closed minded that you can't even be open to a film. This is not real life. It didn't say it was based on a true story. It didn't say it was historical. It didn't say that it was factual. It's a movie. And that bothered me so much. The more I kept watching all of these reviewers that are actually being supported by people. It's like, y'all don't think y'all false prophets leading people astray? Like, none of that is getting through to you that you actually leading people in the wrong direction because you don't even have all of the information. But you're willing to sit down with the confidence that you do. You should be ashamed of yourself. I don't like that. And it bothered me more than I thought it would. But the more videos I watched, it just kept getting to me. And it was like, man, all right, we got this thing now. This is the other thing that was bothering me is like now we do this thing where it's like, I don't I don't agree with I don't agree with everything that this person says. Well, all right, find me the person that you agree with everything they say so you can bring some validity to that statement. What are you talking about? Just like nobody's perfect, there's nobody that you're going to agree with everything they say. What does that mean? What's the point of you saying that? Man, my hair hurt. Before I start getting mad and cussing people out, um, I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate y'all time and attention and everything else. Um, Last couple of months has been crazy. 
don't think that I haven't been recording. I've recorded several videos that just didn't go the way I wanted them to. And it's not that I held them back and then put them out because I didn't want to. I had one where the audio failed. I had one where the video failed where I recorded and the file got corrupted all the way at the end. I had one where I had the audio and the video. And when I put it into my program to edit, I'm going through process and I'm all the way done with the video. I get to 99% and that's an error. So it's been all kind of crazy stuff going on. that just made me like take a step back. I was talking about Diddy. I was talking about TD Jakes. I was talking about TD Jakes. And then right after that, uh, uh, you know, some crazy stuff came out. It's like, I don't know. I had weird timing with some of that stuff. But then at the same time, one of the videos I was recording, you know, like my daughter was born maybe an hour and a half after I finished recording that one. So it was a lot of stuff going on. Y'all can see like, hey, welcome to Gotham. We in, in a new space. Like a lot of stuff has changed. Um, I'm not going nowhere. So y'all don't got to worry about that. But I'm glad to be back in my space. And, you know, whether I, I get all, look, it's been chaos around here. So, you know, if I'm recording and y'all hear some wild sounds, I'm going to try to keep the background noise down as much as possible. But I just had to go. At a certain point, I got I got where I was just like, all right, I'm going to just have to record no matter what. I got to figure this out because I can't just not record. But again, like I said, it's not that I stopped recording. I've been recording. And even when it came to that, it's been all kind of wild stuff going on. So, um, again, you know, if you made it all the way to this point in the video, I appreciate you for sticking with me. I appreciate you for sticking with me in general, checking out these videos, supporting me and just watching this channel grow. Um, it's kind of hilarious. Again, as much as I think about where I started, even the space where I was doing the reaction videos, um, if I could show y'all where I was recording and I can show you what I'm doing now is is it's night and day. But it looked more like day and night. So um I don't know. Just be on the lookout. I'm not done. I'm just getting started. You know, my boy gave me an analogy about, you know, gestation period and uh, you know, a baby being born and all that kind of stuff, and it really just made me put it in perspective. So I stopped trying to rush the process. I'm having fun with this. I'm loving to watch myself grow. I'm loving to watch what my channel has turned into to, you know, from start to finish where, man, I think, you know, I'm, of course my first video was dedicated to my granny. And after that, I was doing one about black lives matter. Uh, that video wasn't even five minutes long. So, um, to grow from that point to where, you know, honestly, It'd be different if I was talking to somebody else. I could talk for a whole lot longer, but even by myself, like y'all have no idea how long I could talk. It just depends on the topic. Like I, I, I clear 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes I cut pieces of the video out, but that's nothing to me now, which is like a huge development for me. So I'm proud of that. I just been giving my spell, giving myself the space and the grace to watch myself grow and see what I turned it into. Um, so I'm here. I love you. I love y'all. And I'm out of here.